Hi guys, uh, this is I. Uh, this form is IMM five four eight four E of the Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. So you need this form with your application. And this form is called the Document Checklist for a Temporary Resident Visa. This document checklist is one of the forms that you need to submit with your application, like what I said. Consult the instruction guide, IMM Form 5256, to find out if you are required to provide some or all of the forms and documents listed in this checklist. So there are some information or some requirements that are stated in the form that you might need or you might not need so you should be able to judge what you need or what you don't need if your documents are in a language other than english or french check with a responsible visa office for your region to determine whether they need to be translated if any of the required documents listed below are missing the processing of your application could be delayed so you have to double check and next is gather your documents in order of the checklist and check the check sign each item so it is very important that when you present your documents you have to gather them in order so you can not just pile them up and you know it's like uh, not in order so it should be in order okay so this is these are the forms list but before that I have enclosed the following items so these are the following items the following CIC forms must be completed, signed, and dated. So again, completed, signed, and dated. Number one is form IMM 5257. That is the application for a temporary resident visa. Note, if this application form is completed on a computer, it must be validated to generate, to generate a barcode. Print and place the barcode page page 5 of 5 on the top of your application or if applying as a group each individual application package then next is family information form this must be completed by those aged 18 years or older note you must complete the family information form or IMM 5707 listed in the application package for your region and the third one is the Statutory Declaration of Common Law Union. So if this applies to you, this is form IMM 5409 and you have to sign it and put the date on it. Note, refer to the responsible visa office for your region. So depending on which you're coming from, where, where you're coming from. So you have to look at that too. And four is use of a representative that is form IMM 5476. Note, complete this form only if you use the services of a representative or if you're appointing or canceling a representative. So when you're dealing with a representative, then you have to consider that form. But if you're not, you don't have to do that. And the last one is authority to release personal information to a designated individual. That is IMM 5475. Note, Complete this form only if you authorize Citizenship and Immigration Canada or CIC and the Canada Border Services Agency or CBSA to release information from your case file to someone other than yourself. So there are one, two, three, four, five. So there are five. Then here are the document list. One is fee payment in acceptable format. Please ensure to include the application processing fee and if applicable, the biometric fee. Verify acceptable methods of payment with the visa office or visa application center responsible for your region. Note, visa offices do not accept payment receipts from Canadian banks. So, take a look at that. And two, a photocopy of the information page of your valid passport or travel document which includes the passport number, the issuance and expiry dates, your photo, name, date, and place of birth. Note, there must be one completely blank page other than the last page available in each passport. Refer to the responsible visa office for your region. So you have to look at these three items here. The passport number, the issuance and expiry dates, your photo, name, date, and place of birth. Next, two photos. 
meeting the requirements of the visa application photograph specifications so this is very important guys so if you have to if you have to give them the the copy of your photograph that's not in their specification so there is a 100% chance that your pack your application will be delayed so uh, make sure that you have to look at this visa application photograph specifications and that's when you're going to tell the photographer or sometimes the photographers knew already but it's just right to verify or you know check on them to make sure that you're doing the right thing on the back of two photos write your name and date of birth again it's not just right to give the photos with the right specification but also when you have the photos in your hand do not forget to write your name and the date of birth on the back of your photos Note: if you are required to provide biometric fingerprints and photo you are not required to include paper photos with your application Proof of financial support. You must include proof that you can support yourself and any family members accompanying you while you are in Canada. So I think you have to go to the bank to get your your statement, bank statements to make sure that you can show them a certain proof of financial support. So it's very important. So, you, you know, the application will be smooth and fast. And next is proof of financial support. I've said this already. You must include proof that you can support yourself and any family members accompanying you while you are in Canada. The next is photocopy of your marriage license or certificate. So refer to the responsible visa office for your region. So I think you can just get it from the Philippine Statistics Office. And the purpose of travel, again refer to the responsible visa office for your region. So what's the purpose of your travel? Then photocopy of your current immigration status. If your country of residence differs from the country of citizenship listed in your passport, you must provide proof of legal status in your country of residence. So it will, it will show them that you have ties to your country of residence. Then minors traveling alone or with one parent must provide custody documents or a letter of authorization from the other non-accompanying partner or a letter of authorization signed by both parents or legal guardians. So refer to the responsible visa office for your region again. And any additional documents required by, by the responsible visa office. So depending on your visa office, they'll, they might ask you more, more documents that's, that are not stated in this form. Then parents and grandparents super visa. One, a letter of invitation from your child or grandchild residing in Canada as a permanent resident or Canadian citizen. Note. You must also include your host child or host grandchild's family composition, dependents, including spouse, children, or other relatives that are financially dependent on your host child or host grandchild. So that's very important. Two, one of the following documents to prove that your child or grandchild meets the low income cutoff minimum are the following. They can provide the following proofs. Most recent copy of the notice of assessment. If you do not have a paper copy of your notice of assessment on file, you can view and print your tax returns as well as other personal tax information using the CRA's My Account Online Services. So yeah, that's the easiest way to find out your notice of assessment. So you have to, if possible, you should create your CRA account. So it will be easy for you to view your notice of assessment or any income tax uh, files that you had for the last few years. Then the most recent copy of the T4 or T1, your original letter from employer stating title, job description, and salary, employment insurance pay stubs, if self-employed, a letter from an accountant confirming their annual income, and the last one is proof of other source of income, pension statement, investments, and etc. Next is evidence of the parent or grandparent relationship to Canadian citizen or permanent resident you wish to visit copy of birth certificate, baptismal certificate, or other official document naming you as a parent or grandparent. The last one in this form, IMM5484E, is the proof of private medical insurance coverage for a minimum of one year with a Canadian insurance company, copy of the insurance certificate or policy. So I think those are all the uh, contents of IMM5484E 
which is known as the Document Checklist for a Temporary Resident Visa.